Hey guys, Miss Marisic here, and in this video we're going to be talking about light, both what kind of variables we can use to describe light's behavior, as well as looking at the calculations we can perform with those variables. So to start us off, you might remember back in pre-EP discussing the fact that light can behave as a wave or a particle depending on the experiment we're conducting. Uh, for example, uh, we have something that are called slit experiments, where they cut really thin lines into some sort of border and then run a light source through those lines and what you'll notice is that on the other side of the border uh, wave patterns start to develop in the light and so that proves the existence that light can behave as a wave however on the flip side you might remember back from pre p chemistry conducting what are called flame tests uh, where you burn a chemical and you'll notice that it releases a certain color of light depending on what chemical you're using and so on those experiments where we have excitation and relaxation of electrons, what we're releasing there are particles of light, little blips, little packets of light. And as a reminder, we call those little packets photons of light. So again, two different experiments where light is behaving in two totally different ways, yet there are even some experiments where it kind of behaves as a blend of both. So it's important to remember that light has a wave-particle duality. Now, there's lots of information out there about that wave-particle duality. Uh, this actually happens to be a really good video clip that I will link in my playlist that you can watch um, where he kind of talks about some of the experiments that led to the conclusions about the wave particle duality. What I want us to understand about this duality is that our calculations that we're going to do, our variables that we use to explain light's behavior, kind of take on a little bit of both of these characteristics. Uh, for example, we have wavelength and frequency where those variables are kind of dealing more with that wave nature to it. However, we also have energy calculations that we perform for a single photon, a single packet of light. Um, so depending on the calculation that I'm trying to do will depend on if I'm thinking about light more as a wave or as a particle. It's kind of a little bit of a blend of both. Um, so to talk about some of those variables that we would use, uh, first off, we have something called wavelength. This is the distance of one complete wave cycle. I usually say it's crest to crest, meaning the top of the wave to the next top of the wave. Um, the symbol is the Greek letter lambda. Um, it has units of meters, nanometers, centimeters, kilometers, depending on the experiment that you're doing. However, if you notice, I underlined meters here. And the reason for that is because that is the one that we most commonly use in a direct calculation because it matches up with some of our constants that we use. So if you need a different variable other than meters, you might have to convert in and out of meters. A frequency is the number of wave cycles that pass a point in one second. So if you had like some sort of recorder that can measure every crest to crest path that that's passing a point in one second, that would be your frequency. Now, in chemistry, we use the Greek nu symbol. Um, if you are in physics and you're dealing with light calculations on their formula chart, I believe they use F. So keep in mind that different formula charts will use a different symbol for those. Don't panic. They mean exactly the same thing. As far as our units for frequency, we're trying to figure out a number of wave cycles, a number that would pass a point in one second. So you notice one of the units here is per second. You would have your number, and that would be your cycles per that one second of time. However, some equivalent units to that are seconds to the negative first, means exactly the same thing, as well as the unit of hertz. So again, all of those can be used interchangeably with each other. They all mean exactly the same thing. Um, as far as our constants are concerned, we have something called the speed of light. This is the constant at which all forms of light travels. Um, it is represented by C. You might remember back from pre-P using 3.0 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. Here we're going to be a little more specific and use 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. And you could also show that unit as meters times seconds to the negative first means exactly the same thing. We have one other constant that we'll talk about here in just a second, um, but we ha do have another variable we can calculate, and that is energy. Um, energy is represented by E, and it does calculate out in joules. Now, keep in mind, you may need to convert to kilojoules depending on what the problem's asking, so you may need to do some sort of metric conversion with that. We also have something called Planck's constant that helps us relate 
our energy and our frequencies together. So if you notice as far as the unit is concerned, it has both joules and seconds in it to tie that energy and frequency together. Um, it is represented by the symbol H and it has a value of 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules times seconds. Now I made a big deal earlier about that unit on wavelength. And the reason why has to do with some of these constants here. We need everything to basically match up so that way my units can cancel out. So the reason why wavelength we would want that in meters is because the speed of light has meters in it. Same thing goes for frequency. That has per seconds in it. And so I've got per seconds here, so I need those to match up. Although these two guys also mean the same thing, so really those would cancel out as well. The reason why I need joules for energy in my calculation is because Planck's constant has joules in it. And so if I don't have that converted into joules, the units won't cancel out. So we just need to be really aware of what kind of units we're dealing with. Now, there are some formulas on our formula chart that we'll look at here in just a minute. Uh, the two that are on there is that energy equals Planck's constant times frequency and that the speed of light equals wavelength times frequency. And so depending on what kind of variables you are using, you could use one or the other of those formulas. Now, like I said, these are both on our formula chart. I actually want to show you the formula chart for just a second. So we look at the section entitled Atomic Structure for this, and you'll see your two formulas here. They also did us a favor, and they gave us what all of those variables stand for, so you really don't have to remember what those symbols are. They give them to you here, which is excellent. Um, they also give you Planck's constant and speed of light values on here. So again, you don't have to remember those. They're on here for you to use. You just need to know how to apply them. So with that said, there's one other formula that's not on our formula chart, and that is this guy right here. If I had a calculation I was performing where, let's say maybe I had wavelength and I was trying to get to energy. These formulas don't have both wavelength and energy together in the same formula. Could I use one and then go and solve the other? Sure, I could use two formulas. Or technically, I can combine the formulas together. Um, if I rearrange this speed of light formula to solve for a frequency, so I get frequency by itself, I would end up dividing wavelength over. I'd have C divided by wavelength. Well, if I plug that in for frequency here, that C divided by wavelength, you notice plugging that in will give you this equation here. So this one's not on our formula chart. Energy equals HC over wavelength, but you could very easily derive it uh, from doing a combination of these two formulas. All right, let's go ahead and talk about our calculations now that are on the next page. So our problem here says that the brilliant red color seen in fireworks are due to the emission of light with wavelengths around 650 nanometers when strontium salts are heated. And it wants us to calculate a couple different variables here. We'll notice that they want us to calculate both frequency and eventually calculate the energy. So to start us off, what I would do is start by writing what kind of variables I'm dealing with in this problem. I notice that I have a wavelength of 650 nanometers. And I also notice it's asking me to calculate the frequency. So that means I'm trying to find my new symbol. So now what I would do is go and find myself a formula that includes both of those variables in it. So I'm going to go consult my formula chart here. And I look at the first formula and I see, ooh, this one has energy, H, and frequency. So it's got frequency in it, but it doesn't have wavelength in it. So I look at my other formula here and I see C equals wavelength times frequency. Well, that one has both of the variables that I'm working between. I don't have speed of light yet, but remember speed of light is a constant. So you'd be given that value over here on the side of the table. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and write that I'm going to use C equals wavelength times frequency for this formula. And I'm also going to go ahead and write my speed of light 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters times seconds to the negative first, or meters per second means exactly the same thing. And I'm going to check my units here and make sure everything matches up. I know that frequency usually comes out in per seconds or seconds to the negative first. So that'll match up with this. But I notice that the meters and nanometers don't match up. So this is where I would need to do a quick metric conversion to make sure that those match. And so I'm going to do a nanometers 
to meters conversion. Um, remember, one always goes with the prefix, and nano is one times 10 to the negative ninth for the base. So I'm going to do my calculation real quick for that. 650 times 1 second e negative 9. That gets me 6.5 times 10 to the negative 7th. And that's going to be meters. So I did use two sig figs because my original number had two sig figs. And so um, that's going to be my number of meters that I would want to use in my calculation. So now that I kind of know everything that's happening here, I can go ahead and plug into my formula. So again, my speed of light is going to be 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters times seconds to the negative first equals my wavelength of 6.5 times 10 in the negative seventh meters times my frequency. And if it makes you feel better about solving algebra, you could always put X there in place of frequency. So I can see to get frequency by itself, I would need to divide this meters value over to the other side. So when I do that, 2.998 second E to the eighth divided by 6.5 second E to the negative seventh I end up getting this value here, thinking through sig figs for a moment. As we said, the only number I had had two sig figs in it. So I'm going to show two sig figs here. So that means that my frequency value is 4.6 times 10 to the 14th. As far as my units are concerned, meters and meters canceled out. So that left me with seconds to the negative first. Now I could also report those units as cycles per second. Or I could even report that unit as hertz. Remember, all three of those units mean exactly the same thing. So you can kind of pick which of those units you would prefer to use. All right, let's go ahead and look at the next one. It says to calculate the energy of one photon of the light. So this time, I'm trying to calculate energy. Okay, um, if I go back to my original data, I knew that I had the wavelength of light here, which was 650 nanometers. Although remember, we said it's better to use that in meters. And so I'm gonna go ahead and write my converted number here of 6.5 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. So I'm gonna go see if I have a formula that has both energy and wavelength in it. Now, when I go to my formulas, I notice that the only one that had energy in it had frequency and not wavelength in it. And so obviously that's a little bit of a problem. Um, now, you could get kind of sneaky on this problem. Since the previous question, you did go ahead and calculate your frequency, since we already know that, you could theoretically plug that frequency into this equation and end up calculating your energy, and that would totally work. However, I wanna show you how you could use that combined formula we talked about. And honestly, it's probably better to do that because I know that 650 value or that 6.5 times 10 to the negative seventh wasn't rounded in any kind of way. And so really that's my true starting value there. So what I'm gonna do is again, use the substituted equation. As a reminder, that equation says that E equals HC over wavelength. Okay, so I need Planck's constant here and I need speed of light. Now, if you don't wanna write those down, remember they are on your formula chart. Um, Planck's constant is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules times seconds. Speed of light, 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters times seconds to the negative first. So I'm just gonna plug those in directly into my math here instead of rewriting those out. But if you wanted to write them out, obviously you absolutely could do that. So trying to solve energy, I'm gonna plug in my H. Six point six two six times ten to the negative thirty fourth joules times seconds. Then I'm going to plug in my speed of light, two point nine nine eight times ten to the eighth meters times seconds to the negative first over my converted into meters wavelength because again I want it to match up with that speed of light there. So I'm going to use six point five times ten to the negative seventh meters. 
All right, so now I'm going to go and plug everything in to my calculator. Times my 2.998 second E. And then I'm going to do divided by 6.5 second E negative 7. All right. So plug in and we get this lovely value here. Now thinking about sig figs for a second, as we said, the original number they gave us only had two sig figs. So that's all I'm going to report here. So I'm going to report the value of 3.1 times 10 to the negative 19th. Now let's talk units for a second here. Okay, seconds divided by seconds would cancel meters divided by meters would cancel and so all I would be left with there is joules. All right the next question says hey calculate the energy of an entire mole of photons of this red light and you're thinking well didn't I just calculate energy? Well we did but this was only the energy of one photon and now I want the energy of an entire mole. Now I will warn you we're going to actually do this in a very specific unit. We're actually going to go ahead and convert this into kilojoules per mole because that's a very common unit you have to report in. So let's think about how we would do that. So I'm going to write my starting number here of 3.1 times 10 to the negative 19th and that is going to be joules for every one photon for a just a little packet a little blip of light so now what i'm going to do is some dimensional analysis to convert this value let's first convert the joules into kilojoules and hopefully we realize that that would just be a metric conversion so I'm going to have joules on the bottom, kilojoules on top, so that way the joules cancel. Kilo is my prefix. One always goes with the prefix. And so I'm going to put one times 10 to the third down here with joules. There's a thousand joules in a kilojoule. So now I need to deal with this photon. I want to get the photon into terms of moles. Well, think about how we get in terms of particles into moles. Surprise, surprise, we're going to use Avogadro's number here, uh, which is part of the reason, by the way, if you noticed on the formula chart, one of the things they included in this uh, section was Avogadro's number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, hey, photon was on the bottom here in the denominator. And so to get it to cancel, I actually want to put it on top. And I'm going to convert it into moles. We'll think about Avogadro's number. Avogadro's number says that for every one mole of a substance, there are 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles of that substance. So here, your particles, instead of being molecules or atoms or something like that, just happen to be photons. So now I'm ready to plug all this into my calculator. 3.1 second e to the negative 19th. Then I'm going to have 1 over 1 second e to the third. And then I'm going to have 6.022 second e to the 23rd. And if you want to put divided by 1 because it makes you feel better, go right ahead. And I'm going to hit enter. Now you could either report this in scientific notation or if you change the mode to normal mode, you could report it like so. And again, I do want to show here two sig figs, that original uh, wavelength that they gave me had two sig figs. So I could either show 1.9 times 10 to the second, or I could report 190, and that's going to be kilojoules per mole that would be released by that red light. All right, hopefully we're feeling good about doing light calculations and we're feeling comfortable with recognizing all of our light variables. Um, if you have any questions or need any help, please feel free to email me. Bye guys.